I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> 500 bucks. $110,901. That is the deal. You can't go? No. Make sure you stick around for the entire video as we count on some of the most expensive buys on Pawn Stars. Do you want to win any of these items on the screen? If so, be sure to watch the whole video, leave a like, and comment the hidden message. And with that being said, let's get right back into the video. 200 pounds of silver. Let's start off with a purchase that is still very mind-boggling to think about on many levels. Because when it comes to the pawn business, there aren't a lot of objects that are what you might call instant money. Because when it comes to collectible items, cars, and other such things, you can't just unload them. You have to haggle with people and find the right buy which means that the prices that you were aiming to get aren't always going to be what you want them to be. One of the only exceptions to this rule is precious metals like gold and silver. And so you can imagine the shock of the Harrisons on Pawn Stars when a man walked into their pawn shop with over 200 pounds of silver, which isn't something you see every day or even hear of every day. This haul was truly a major deal and score for the crew though, since every government in the world basically accepts silver as a currency. That means the value of it is only restricted by the exchange rate. In the US, the exchange rate for silver is actually quite high. This haul was truly a major deal and score for the crew though, since every government in the world basically accepts silver as a currency. That means the value of it is only restricted by its exchange rate in the US and it fluctuates every year, usually going up instead of down. The man who brought in the silver actually got it 12 years prior and because he waited before selling it, the price of silver skyrocketed and this allowed him to get an incredible $111,000 from Rick and the old man. Rick even noted on this episode how the old man was a big fan of silver and he had every right to be, but just as important, they left enough on the bone for them so that when they exchanged the silver themselves, they would get the right amount. Oh, and in case you were wondering, yes, the silver itself was appraised in full and all the silver was legitimate. You have to praise the patience of the customer for waiting that long. Most people would have flipped it immediately, but he was smart and sold it when he felt the time was right. And you can bet the Harrisons, especially the old man, was thankful for that. JFK Cigar Box. This is John F. Kennedy's cigar box. Wow, really? So where did you get it? John Fitzgerald Kennedy is one of the most famous presidents the world ever had. Charming, an eloquent speaker, and a very forward thinker, JFK was one of the youngest men to ever be called the president. And when he died, the world mourned for it lost a great man. Of course, due to his passing, anything associated with the late president is worth a lot of money, if it can be authenticated, including a cigar box once used by the president. Oh yeah, we mean it. Ironically, this isn't the only cigar box that JFK had, for he had another one that was actually sold to a cigar magazine in the 90s for over five $500,000, which is important for the Pawn Stars because that means there's a precedent for it, and thus they could try and dictate price based on that previous sale, and thus Rick had to get it. Thankfully for him, the customer was able to prove that it was a real deal, even proving that he made a deal with the estate that had the cigarette box originally. They were able to verify everything, including the name that was supposed to be on the cigars, which again is crucial as proof of it being real is vital to getting the right price. Speaking of cigars, the box itself actually had some cigars missing, but still had the seven that were unused, meaning it was very possible that the president himself actually smoked the missing ones and touched the others, thus adding even more value to it in a way. Rick was able to get a good deal for the cigar box, buying it for a mere $60,000. I know that's a lot, but considering how much the other one sold for, he could have had to pay a lot more, and you can bet that after he sold that cigar box for a big profit that he was smoking cigars of his own. Steven Stills 1941 Gibson Guitar this is a 1941 Gibson SJ200. That is cool. Steven Stills was a member of the rock and roll group Crosby, Stills & Nash and is a very legendary guitar player. When a young man showed up with his guitar in the shop, it did not take very long before an expert verified the authenticity of it. Jesse, his local guitar expert, loved the guitar, a rare 1941 Gibson SJ200, and even let the owner know about it. The guitar itself was worth $75,000 at least, but being owned by Steven Stills turned that price up another $20,000. After he left, the negotiating began with the seller looking for $90,000, but Rick offered $85,000, and he eventually struck a deal. One of the reasons Rick loves guitars is because of how quickly they fly off the shelves at pawn shops. 1932 Lincoln Roadster. Wow, look at this thing. It's nice. I think I love it. Pretty cool car you got here. Yeah. Cars are a very valuable item, especially when they are classics that were made in the right year, which can make them exceedingly rare. Pawn shops don't always get offers for 
cars, mainly because they can be hard to flip or aren't as valuable as the owners think. But if the price is right, anything can be done, especially when it's the Pawn Stars making a deal. In season 7 of the show, Rick and the crew got a chance to buy an absolute classic of a car, the 1932 Lincoln Roadster, one of the first convertibles ever made, which makes it instantly valuable because it was a trendsetter. The Lincoln Roadster was meant to be part of a luxury car, and with a convertible top, it definitely gave off that vibe. So now, it's a classic car, if you find the right one, without a lot of damage. The customer Mike who had the car, had it in perfect condition, which isn't something that is easy to do in this day and age, especially considering that this car is almost 90 years old. Its age did show in unique ways though, such as the cramped quarters where Rick and the crew could barely fit in it, though it should be noted that the Harrisons weren't exactly the smallest of people. Anyway, after getting it appraised to be the real thing, the bid was made at $95,000, and Mike happily accepted that, and then went and turned all that money into blocks of gold. No, really, he did that, and it's not as crazy as you might think. 2014 Hertz Pence GT Mustang. I'll do 75. <sighs> I'll write you a check for 60 grand. It'll even be good. Continuing on with the car sales, you might think that a newer car model wouldn't be as valuable as an older one, but as in all things, there are exceptions to the rule. One of the biggest ones is when a couple car companies come together for a unique build in a recent year. That can top the older is more valuable staple. This was the case when Hertz decided to team up with Mustang in order to make 150 limited edition cars. When anything is limited edition, it tends to be valuable. So surely enough, a customer came and offered Rick Harrison one of the first 10 ever made. That's really rare. After verifying that it was indeed one of the first 10 of the 150, he decided to take it on a test drive. More accurately, he got legendary NASCAR driver Joey Logano to test drive it and make sure that it was in perfect running condition. How Rick Harrison knew Joey Logano is a bit up for debate, but you can guess that if nothing else went right with the car deal, he could at least say he rode around on television with Logano, who's a NASCAR star in every sense of the word. According to Logano, the car was legit and they were able to make a deal for $60,000. The original Godfather script. I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> 500 bucks. Considered to be one of the greatest films ever made, it's no surprise that any memorabilia related to The Godfather would fetch an enormous price, especially when signatures are involved. That was the intention of this particular seller, at least when she brought in her Godfather screenplay, signed by someone named Al. After an expert verified that the Al in question was none other than Al Pacino, the seller had more than enough fuel in her fire to ask for a high price. The customer started at an asking price of $1,000. However, the Pawn Stars felt this was too much, so they lowballed her with 500. Well, it turns out the customer made bank off this piece of work as she ended up selling it for a lot more. Part of the discussion on the TV show was who wrote an inscription in front of the 158 page screenplay and signed it out. Was it Al Pacino as a signature authenticator for the show claimed? That's my signature. Rudy exclaimed to no one in particular when he saw the show on TV. After the charity decided to sell the screenplay at auction, Rudy, a big supporter of the work done by the organization, contributed some extra Hollywood memorabilia. Photographs from the Godfather movie set, even videotaped congratulations congratulatory remarks for the eventful owner. Thinking the goodies would boost the value of the screenplay on behalf of the charity, he was certainly pleased that the screenplay fetched $12,000 at auction. Either way, this was definitely a bad loss for the Pawn Stars, as they could have had such a good piece of work on their hands. 1915 Panama Pacific Octagonal Gold Coin. So how much you asking for this? $70,000. Would you take sixty-five dollars for it? Um, no. As the Pawn Stars have shown, many items come to their stores where they know the perfect customer to sell it to. But sometimes Sometimes, Rick and the crew have to go to places to get the items that they know people want, such as in one episode where Rick Harrison was on the hunt for a very special gold coin. He wanted a 1915 Panama Pacific octagonal gold coin. He knew a guy who would pay $70,000 for it, and so he went to an auction in Florida to look for the coin. Luckily for him, he did find a guy who had one, and it was in perfect condition. His asking price? $70,000. Yeah, not exactly what Rick wanted to hear, so he did what anyone would do. He walked away and tried to find another one of these coins. He did find one, but it had some big flaws. First, it was cleaned, which actually devalues it because it loses the antique look. Second, it had some obvious damage, and even though it was at a much lower cost of $48,000, Rick knew that his customer wouldn't buy anything short of perfection. And for Rick, customer satisfaction honestly is an important thing. So he went back to the other guy and was able to work out a deal for $67,500. Not as much profit as he wanted, but as Rick noted, even a little profit 
profit is good. Plus, you got to please a customer, which meant potential future sales. 1932 Custom Ford Roadster. That is the rock bottom best price I can do. 65? Well, I don't know if I can do that. Two of the most popular items on Pawn Stars are antiques and cars. So naturally, when the two concepts get combined into one, big bucks quickly enter the conversation. This was definitely the case when a customer invited Rick and Corey Harrison to his home for negotiations over a beautiful black 1932 Custom Ford Roadster, similar to the classic B model. When cars of this style were first introduced, they cost a cool $490, which even with inflation, is just a modest $8,822 today. However, the age of the car, plus the fact that it was in practically perfect condition, with only 450 miles on the speedometer after almost 80 years of existence, despite how good things looked, Rick and Corey were understandably a little bit hesitant to make such a big money deal on an extremely old vehicle, until their car expert friend Danny, the Count Coker, talked them into it. It is now worth over $70,000, which is insane. Gibson SG Les Paul Guitar. Big thing is, how much you want for it now? Well, I was thinking a quarter million would do it. Musical items are a bit tricky and for pawn shops to buy and sell them, you need to be careful. For a good quality instrument can be a good thing to sell, but if you're able to get one that belonged to a legendary musician, you're good as gold, if it's real. One day a customer brought in a Gibson guitar that was once owned by a woman named Mary Ford. That name may not mean anything to you, but her husband was Les Paul, which hopefully you do recognize that name. Les Paul was not only an accomplished singer and songwriter, including writing several big hits with his wife Mary, his use of the solid body electric guitar was one of the things that changed the world of music in a positive way. So to have a guitar that was owned by him and was a custom model was a big score for Rick and the Pawn Star crew. Here's the twist though. The customer actually wanted a whopping $250,000 for the piece, but Rick was able to whittle that down to well below half that, getting it for $90,000. By his own admission, this is the most money he has ever spent on a guitar for his shop, yet he could justify the purchase because of it being verified as a Les Paul guitar and the history that came with it. East India Company Bell. This is going to pay all my moving expenses and maybe even get me a big screen TV. This ain't right. Many of us heard stories or told stories about sunken treasure, about what lies in the waters beyond, and the depths that contain untold riches. The desire to have an item with that kind of feeling is very rare. But believe it or not, sunken treasure is a bit more common than you might think, and it shows up in places like the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop quite often. And Rick was thrilled when a 1602 Dutch East India Company bell showed up on his counter. His excitement could be felt as he explained about how the bell could have been on a journey or another and then just happened to go down with a boat. So even in the lock of the bell, it felt like he was hearing a story about an old treasure. The mood was soured a little when the old man pointed out something. The woman who brought it in said it was sunken treasure, and yet the bell itself looks rather clean. Even with modern polishing tools, there should have been some damage from the waters, right? That's how most metals get worn down, and this one was hundreds of years old. Well, they brought in an expert, and he noted that actually 90% of shipwrecks fell into fresh water, and thus, don't actually degrade over time. So if you're looking for treasure, look in freshwater places first. Regardless of where it was found, the bell was real. And this sunken treasure was bought for $16,000, which made both Rick and the old man happy because they had a cool piece of sunken treasure in their shop. And I can bet you that they made sure they put that on the sign that pointed to it. Sunken treasure gold bar. So you're telling me that's worth $48,000? There's probably not a lot of people out there willing to buy this thing, trust me. How about another sunken treasure bit? As Rick has noted in an episode, he buys gold all the time at his pawn shop, but one thing that never happens is that he gets a gold bar from a sunken treasure. You might be thinking, of course, what's the difference between a regular gold bar and a gold bar from a ship? Well, if you were to go find a gold bar from the ground right now, that has a rate that you have to abide by when you exchange it. But gold from the past, especially ones lost on a ship, that's a different story. For as noted earlier, adding history to a piece raises its value. In fact, you would appraise it by melting down the gold bar weighing it, factor in the exchange rate, and then doubling it. Oh yeah, it's that valuable. The ironic thing here though, is that the guy who actually brought in the gold bar didn't know it was a sunken treasure piece. He just thought it was gold. But when Rick took a look at it, he saw markings that made it seem like sunken treasure. He brought in his appraiser. All told, the gold bar cost $48,000, which they happily paid and then sold off for a higher price, thus getting the deal and crossing something off of Rick's bucket list in terms of pawn shop purchases. Book of Mormon. I would appraise this book actually at about $40,000. 
Oh. While most people these days have made the jump to movies or TV, the people who still read books really enjoy reading books. Granted, the ones who prove this the most are the sort who would be happy to pick up a shabby, barely put together copy of an old classic and get lost in it as if it were brand new. However, if a book fan is going to actually drop huge bucks on a particular text, it better be pretty darn special. When a singular book is responsible for creating one of the biggest religions in the world today, it's fair to say it reached that level of uniqueness. That was definitely the case with this 1842 copy of a fifth edition edition book of Mormon, one of the last printed in the lifetime of Mormonism founder Joseph Smith. When a customer brought this into Rick's store, he understandably doubted it could possibly be real, only for expert Rebecca Romney to confirm it was. Given the historical value alone, Rick was willing to drop $24,000 on a book Romney said could probably make him anywhere from 50 to 75 grand. Super Bowl ring from the New England Patriots. So how much do you want for this thing? 22,000. 20 grand. Cash. $100 bills. The New England Patriots were one of the most dominant football teams of all time, so imagine the Pawn Stars' surprise when one of the members from the 2001 Super Bowl team came in to sell off the ring that he had gotten. And before you ask, no, it actually wasn't fake. Here's the catch. Despite the value of it being around $100,000, the guy never came back for the ring, so now it's Rick's forever, or until he sells it. How can a Super Bowl ring be worth $100,000, you ask? Simple. History and the jewels that were on the ring. Patriots owner Robert Kraft didn't care about the rules about making the rings a certain size, so he made the biggest Super Bowl ring in history. As a result, this one was a trendsetter. Rick loves this ring so much that he'll occasionally wear it around the store and show it off, just to prove that he really has it. Very classy, Rick. Did you want to win any of these items on the screen? If so, be sure to watch the whole video, leave a like, and comment the hidden message.